Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are hanging with Lucy Guest, and I am hanging with Galaxy on Comic-Con Radio. You know what must be done, Sabrina. Claim the throne. Save precious Greendale, your boyfriend. Keep going on like this. It can't be all hell all the time. Sigils apertas. It's not all hell. It's all Nick. The balance is off in hell, so it is off in heaven, so it is off on earth. To preserve one realm, you must preserve them all. Embrace your destiny, Sabrina. Hell's under new management now. I'm the devil's worst nightmare. Are you sure you want to do this? Will you help me? Here we go again. If you want the crown, you're going to have to prove yourself worthy of it. That's my girl. Being queen of hell isn't a summer job. You're putting the coven in peril just so you can see your boyfriend. Forget about me. You have a coven to save. Save Greendale, my family, my friends, everything I love. Alright, see you later. Let's finish this. Honestly, first purgatory, now hell. What's next? Heaven. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic Con Radio. Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe. Comic-Con Radio. Get ready to enter our universe. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy for another cool and fun episode of Comic-Con Radio. We're back after a great weekend. Today we have a, a guest of all guests. Her name is Lucy Guest, and she's on Comic-Con Radio. Lucy, how are you today? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you for having me. Well, hey, thank you for coming on <laughs> the show. We're going to talk about your projects, what you like doing, things you don't like doing. So to start with that, you're from Canada. I want to get that out of the way because whenever I have Canadian guests, I have to point that out that they're from Canada and we got to thank Canada. So drum roll. Thank you, Canada. How are you? So you were born and raised there? I was born in Victoria, which is on Vancouver Island. It's also the capital of British Columbia. Fun fact. And yes, yeah, so I was raised on an island, and it's about an hour and a half ferry from Vancouver, which is where a lot of filming is done, um, which is where we film Sabrina. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Let's get into yeah. Sabrina. You're an actor, director, and a writer. Ah. One of the three, if you had a choice to rock and roll in one of those, would you pick one, or are you like doing all three? Well, my favorite is the trifecta, where I'm directing something that I'm in and I wrote, that is the most fun. But then I would choose acting. I think that's sort of my first love. And then if I had to go second, I'd say directing. Writing is sort of like a means to an end, <laughs> sort of. Creating content is a really good position to be in. And it creates more work for you as an actor and as a director. So yeah, I think they kind of all sort of work together. And uh, I think it's a good thing to have to diversify just as an artist to constantly create more content. And not a lot of people can yeah. do that. Not a lot of people no. can write and direct and act. Usually they get into acting and then they try their hands at directing, but never do they write. And if they write, that's a whole different talent to itself. Is there any current projects that you've created? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple on the go. I just finished directing a um, movie of the week, which is 
a romance, like a, almost like a rom-com, less calm, more rom, called Love at First Light. And uh, I just finished my director's cut on that. And then I'm working on writing another one. With I have a co-writer for both these projects. And she lives in LA, so we kind of work remotely. And then I have a couple of little passion projects that are more in the comedy vein, indie comedy films. Wow, look at you. Mm -hmm. You're keeping yourself <laughs> busy. So every yeah. chance you get, do you write yourself in? Or the story is more important than being yourself in it? Definitely uh, for the movie of the week, the, the romance is, uh, the story is more important. Especially since those ones I usually pitch to a production company or a network. So I usually just co-write and direct those ones but on my passion projects the little indie films that I make I usually write a character that I'm sort of drawn to or from my own life they say you know write about what you know and that's sort of where I usually write down a lot of my thoughts from the day or just weird situations that have happened to me that I will sort of draw inspiration from you know that's where I'll sort of like play a character just because it's so close to me as as an artist. And I think just to circle back to what you were saying about director, writer, actor, I do think you're right. I think writing is very hard. And I find that it's the hardest of all of the three modalities that I do. And I definitely love collaborating and, and writing with writing partners just because it does make it feel uh, less of a grind <laughs> for sure. Yeah, grind is yeah. the word. Yeah, <laughs> grind uh, is the word. Yeah. Yes, yes, it does get a little bit uh, frustrating at times. But if you have a direction and you know where you're gonna pitch it to and where it's gonna go, that's a good way to let some of the emotions and some of the talent seek out into the world and to projects. So, do you ever pitch anything for like Hallmark or any of those channels? Do you ever work on any of those Christmas movies? I would love to do a Christmas movie. I have the guilty. Christmas pleasure. I love watching Christmas movies. I don't have a Christmas movie right now. I have a few ideas for some, and I would love to do that down the road. Right now, I'm basically working in this sort of wedding romance, <laughs> pilot falling in love with small town girls, that kind of genre. That's cool. If that's a genre. <laughs> and yeah, it's very Hallmark esque. I'm a sucker for romance. I was thinking about that. I was like, I do, I do love a good romance. The Notebook. Yeah. Rewatch that a million times. Kind yeah. of like a guidebook to the romance uh, <laughs> writers uh, <Yeah>. universe. <laughs> now, here's a question: Canada, is it always cold, or is it cold like thirty percent of the time? Well, I think it's, it depends where you live in Canada. We live. I live in Vancouver, which um, actually doesn't snow here very often. I've, I remember growing up, and there've been years where it didn't snow at all. So it's kind of a misconception that we have snow everywhere in Canada, although it did just snow here. But Montreal or Ontario, Saskatchewan, Calgary, some of the other provinces, Newfoundland get a ton of snow. We're kind of the, I wanted to sort of temperate rainforest in Canada. We just get a lot of rain. Which one do you like more, snow so, or rain? So definitely rain. I've tested this theory out. I lived in Toronto for three years. And by the third year, I was like, I can't do another winter. This I can't put on 18 layers just to go outside. And it'll be snowing in Toronto and it's bright and sunny and people love it versus here in the winter where it's dark and rainy. But I would take dark and rainy over minus I mean, we have Celsius, but it could be like minus 30 with wind chill. Which you can't stand outside in for very long. I'll take rain over snow anytime. Oh, yeah, I'll take rain any day. <laughs> <laughs> any day. Well, Just an umbrella. Yeah. You're fine. And I've noticed that you've worked on a bunch of different TV shows, iZombie, Supernaturals, Orphan Black, Timeless. Timeless is one of my favorite shows. Uh, Supernaturals as well, but Supernaturals is coming to an end. Are you bummed about that? I know it started a lot of huge TV shows, but to you, was getting on Supernatural like the biggest deal? I remember when I booked Supernatural. I was surprised at how big of a fan following Supernatural had. It was one of the shows where I was sort of recognized the most after doing that show. And the fans just adore that show. They have the most amazing uh, fan following. And I guess that is why they've 
done, I don't know, are they going into the 15th season or something like that? It's their yeah. final season, but yeah, it's around final. there. They're like, we can't go on anymore. We've had every actor in the world on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've even recycled actors yes, here in Vancouver. Yes, yeah. So if you... There, you could you could audition for you know some Vancouver actors would audition again for another episode seasons and seasons later, or come back because I mean it is supernatural so your your character could have come back. They could resurrect. Never really did. Yes. So talking about resurrections and stuff like that, mm-hmm. Sabrina, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. That's an Archie comic hit series. When you landed that show, were you excited? I was a fan so yes i was very excited i had heard about the show i was one of those people that had the countdown for the first ever pilot that came on netflix with the 16 candles where she like blew it out that teaser i watched it so many times and that's the trailer for the first season and so when i had heard about it um and found out about the character i was really really excited to read for it and then when i got the part i was thrilled did you throw a big party did you <laughs> jump up and down? What was your first reaction? I was driving, so oh, I wasn't. Okay. I couldn't jump up and down. <laughs> so like, you rolled down your window and you're like screaming. Yeah, and then just screamed. Out the- <laughs> <laughs> I rolled down my window and I just screamed, Sabrina, at the top of my lungs. There you go. And you play Cer- <laughs> Cersei. Cersei. You play Cersei. Oh, he's cute. Yeah, so <laughs> made of uh, tomato. So who's Cersei? So Cersei is obviously I can't reveal too much, but she is a palm reader, part of this mysterious carnival that sort of rolls into town, which you will soon see in a few days. We've actually put some promos out on our social pages to promote the series, and we did that for free. So Netflix. That's so great. Yes, we did that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we're excited about that. I know you can't share anything, but what can you share about your character? What can you talk about? Because we got to know something. Well, I, I can say that this season, well, season is broken up in parts. So part three is definitely dark and unexpected. And I think the fans are going to be very surprised and excited about how my character interacts with Sabrina's journey and how we sort of um, play a role in part three. And I think this season, when I definitely, when we were filming the episodes a few times, I had moments where I felt like the writers really know their stuff. Like they really have to research everything dark and occult and horror because at a few moments while filming it felt very dark and very real. (laughs) So I don't know. I hope it, I then know that that will come across in the series. So I guess that's all I can say. Well, we don't want to get you in trouble. We don't want to squeeze no. info that's not supposed to be coming out. And that's uh, premiering yeah. on the 24th, right? In a couple of days. Uh, yes, in a couple of days. Yeah. Ooh. I'm very excited. Uh-oh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Well, everybody Uh-oh. is excited. <laughs> so when you went on set, yeah. are the sets believable? Are they better I, than normal? I mean, yes. Coming in as a new character in this series after they've done part one and two, and just walking in to seeing these sets was jaw-dropping. The, the attention to detail and the work that goes into building these huge sets, uh, it, it's so incredible. And just the costuming alone, Angus is a costume designer. I know he's at least Oscar-nominated. I believe he might have won an Oscar for Moulin Rouge, but... He is, his mind is just very creative and just putting on your costume for the first time was so special. Is your costume elaborate? <laughs> uh, my, <laughs> my costume, uh, let's just say I really wanted to keep it, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> you wanted to auction it after. I wanted to keep it for myself. I wanted to sleep in it. I wanted to wear it every day. Did you sneak anything off set? I didn't sneak anything off set. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know. Actually, that's not true. I did. I did. I did. I have um, these. I can't really say what they are, but I have these small pieces of, um, let's just say, uh, art <laughs> that I, I, I did 
uh, was given I could take home with me and I can't wait to show them because I was just so blown away with the production design and the set deck and I think a couple of the other characters took some too and I was like can I take this home with me this is so amazing and they're like Shh, sure don't tell anyone <laughs> we're like okay <laughs> now it's really kind them of but... crazy that they have so many things on a set especially shows like Sabrina with the bigger budgets they have like thousands of pieces of it stuff that beyond. anybody would buy yes. but they won't give it to you they rather just go store yes. it somewhere well and sometimes they reuse it so um they like keep everything for hot stock just in case because you really never know when a character is going to go back to a different set or they're going to bring a certain storyline back. You really have no idea where things are going. So I think keeping things hot stock is just in general what a lot of productions do. But in Sabrina, you see just something in the corner of the room that looked sort of interesting. And then you find out it's this sort of vintage imported thing that was sent from somewhere in the world around the world. And you're like, this is a tiny little thing in the corner of the room. I can't believe how much attention to detail there is in the show. So with that said, yes. which character did you connect the most with during part three? Like as a person, as the actor, like uh, offset hanging out with, or just in general, during filming set, on like set, as character set, as a character oh. <laughs> well first i just have to say this show is like no other show i've ever worked on where the actors not the characters but the actors are the most welcoming and inclusive cast i've ever worked with my first day of shooting that weekend kiernan and lucy invited me and some of us new kids to their apartment and to play games so we did a game night which i had never done running charades before which was super fun but that doesn't really happen where you're brand new it's your first day and you know you're they were just very very inclusive of everyone and um i thought that was really special especially kiernan she's beyond professional and I'm just in awe of who she is as a as an actor. She's, I don't know how old she is. She must be 19. Don't quote me on that. But her level of professionalism is sort of beyond. She just is always in a great mood. She always has her lines just inside out and backwards. And she's just very charming and welcoming. And it, I think when you have a lead of a show that's just so on their game like that, I think it sets a precedent for all the other actors to follow suit. And you really get a feeling of that being on set. So it's hard not to connect with everyone that's there. They have these sort of green rooms on set. And um, even in the green room, we'll all be playing games or talking. It's Even though the show is very dark and sometimes you're doing very dark scenes, um, the energy of the cast is really positive, which I think really helps balance out some of the dark content. Good yeah, vibes, it's very cool. Good energy. Good vibes. Good yeah. everything. So she's 20 and she portrays herself really well. You know, on the show, you don't know how old she is, but when you see her on other projects, you can tell that she's younger. I had Clive Stannon on the show just recently, and he was talking about Vikings, how Travis, he played Ragnar Lothbrok, and how he was so cool. Like, he didn't need special amenities and all that. So he said that kind of grounded the entire cast because if the lead didn't care and he was cool with everything, why should anybody else act, you know, like they're a superstar? So that's pretty cool that everybody welcomed you and invited you for game playing and stuff like that. So that means, you know what that means for everyone, right? That means that Cersei is a very important character for this season because they wouldn't <laughs> just have the janitor come play board games with them would they so there ladies and gems she just spilled it very out. good she's gonna get in trouble spilled the now. beans and that's <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, you're probably like what the hell is going on Anyways, no 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 it's all good fun moments i know you can't see that's the problem you can't share fun moments you can't say anything you can't like do any of that because you're going to be like swilling your guts and i don't want to ask you questions and make you feel comfortable and then get all this stuff out of you and then later your showrunner listens to the show and they're like ah oh, what happened you know you just gave the entire well, season she away. fell apart <laughs> she gave it all away <laughs> you gave it all away so i'm gave not gonna ask away. about that anymore okay. no more sabrina just right. that it's coming okay. out on the 24th. 
Uh, your yes. character is Cersei. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. It's very dark by the commercials. You know, they were leaking trailers out very different this time. Usually they're like, you know, a hundred little tidbits of commercials, like come and watch it. Now it's like a little music video and a trailer a couple of weeks before it launches. It's very different this season. You think mm -hmm. because the popularity is so huge, you have to work with such a big hush-hush situation? I think so. I think that Sabrina um, has a huge fan following and people love the show. They're very dedicated to it and are sort of waiting for any little tidbit or nugget to drop. Well, they didn't get any nuggets here. Nothing from you. So no. No. Oh, oh any man. Any credit. <laughs> for you giving any nuggets to us today. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You know what? It's not just about the show. It's about you today. Okay. So your goals, right? Your goals. If you can work yeah. on any TV series other than Sabrina or be any character in any movie, not to take anybody else's place, of course, because if you course. say that, people might think, oh, well, you can do better. We're not talking about that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? She doesn't want to take nope over anybody's role what or maybe she TV does show? oh you do okay. well she does want to take <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what movie or tv show would you want to work on right now if you had a chance i don't know if you've heard of the show fleabag but i'm a huge yes. fan i would love to work on that show if they ever do a third season on yours or if they could do a sequel or another version of bridesmaid would be amazing I don't know if you saw that movie, but it was a long time ago. It was a comedy with Kristen oh, yeah. Wig. Why don't you okay. write one? Well, maybe I am. Maybe I am. You have that it's in the works. It's, it's in the works. <laughs> Seven years in the works. <laughs> make yeah. it happen. Uh, right. Make it happen. You heard it here You're first. like, yeah, all right. If, 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 if it was that easy, <laughs> if it yeah. was that easy, wait, let me give a moment of silence. If it was that easy, yeah, you would all that be that in such it. different places. Exactly. But uh, let's take a moment. Know, let's take a moment. Would you ever be in a superhero TV series? Any DC or Marvel stuff? Would you? Would you dig that? I love Supergirl. I would love and or Batwoman. Oof, that would be such a cool part. Uh, Not that I would ever again take away from that for sure. She's killing it. But maybe like a, a side friend. You would be a sidekick of Batwoman. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. They're filmed Why in not? Canada. I would like to be like the sort of Canada. like if the, exactly. It could be sort of like the I could be the self deprecating sidekick of that <laughs> woman. <laughs> oh, that's, that's maybe so not cool. on brand, maybe not on tone, but maybe something the fans don't even know but are dying to have. There you go. This is the final season of Arrow, but they're coming out with like new spinoffs because Arrow mm -hmm. started that whole Arrowverse and then Flash came on and then Legends of Tomorrow and there's Supergirl, there's Batwoman. I heard Green Lantern starting. There's mm -hmm. so many TV shows there. So you have it there. Just grind it that way. I know it's easier to say and you know it's harder to get done but i think that universe is great you'll get to go to conventions and i think sabrina is one of those shows that uh, is going to become a cult classic or is currently becoming one and the characters on it are going to be part of this huge fandom that it will stay alive for decades to come so you picked it good you did a good job well thank you yes I thank you sir I'll give you an a plus <laughs> for that so moving on from that moving on from that do you believe in ghosts? I did work at a haunted restaurant once. No and, way. Um, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's this haunted mansion on Davy Street in Vancouver. Uh, it used to uh, be owned by Roger's Sugar family. And there's actually an underground tunnel during the Prohibition days where they would, you know, cart, I guess, alcohol back and forth to another huge sort of mansion down the road, which they've turned into a restaurant at the time. I was probably 18 and the restaurant or 19 and the restaurant was called Macaroni Grill and it was in a giant mansion. And one night we were closing the, the restaurant down and that was always the worst time because the, it had five floors and the office for the managers was up in the attic and you'd have to sort of bring, you know, the kegs downstairs to the basement or some, something downstairs with, with the fridge was in the basement. And I was in the, on the main floor and my manager had come downstairs to say, okay, you know, I'm just doing the cash outs and then we'll, you know, we're done closing the restaurant. And we heard all these sort of chairs moving upstairs and there was nobody upstairs. 
in the restaurant. People have said that there's a mural on the wall and they've had, they've had many fires at this restaurant, but um, they said when, after one of the fires, uh, this painter was painting the mural again and he was on the ladder and the same thing, the restaurant was closed, nobody was in there and he uh, heard something and he turned around and saw what he said was a, like a, a lady in dress sort of in white and he was like, oh, the restaurant's closed. And he said he went down off the ladder and she was gone. There's been a lot of stories about that, but I'm sure you can look it up online. Roger Sugar Mansion. On wow. Street. So it's known, mm-hmm. it's notorious for being haunted. That lady yeah, I mean, every now and then. Yeah, yeah. And the basement kind of sealed them over, but has all these tunnels. And they've kind of put uh, bricks in front of them and sealed these tunnels these underground tunnels very wow. creepy that's pretty creepy yeah and you worked there did you ever yeah. go to like some creepy back storage room to get sugar and they're like oh let's <laughs> send a new girl let's send yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i mean i don't know if i've creeped my own self out but there was a few times i ran back up the stairs from the basement just because i was like what is that noise oh my gosh yeah but, i've done that uh, before that was a long, yeah i mean i might have been just my <laughs> own self being freaked out but yeah, just a lot of the staff and mostly the managers had stories because they would be there late at night um, when there'd be or early morning prep chefs had stories. The early morning yeah, prep chefs but... are lying. They're just trying to steal stuff for home <laughs> and somebody caught them. They were like, ah, exactly. <laughs> liars. Like, that was no good. They're stealing eggs the again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I can handle myself. I'm not scared of people. Me and Clive were talking. No. We're not scared of people, but we're scared of the unknown. Totally. Uh, That's you know, more you terrifying. Yeah, it's terrifying. Imagine you're walking some lady in a white gown. like, hey, hello. You're like, what? I got to run <laughs> from you, lady. <laughs> you don't look pretty to me anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want you're you. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Not that kind of lady. <laughs> Terrifying. Well, you know, that's a cool story. I asked that because everybody's stories are so different. You know, guests call from England and Australia and all parts of the world and have such amazing stories. And it's intriguing to hear what people believe in or don't believe in. Uh, with that question, I'm going to ask you one more of these, uh, you know, uh, fun little things. Do you believe in aliens? Do you think there's extraterrestrials out there in our outer space. I have never seen an alien, but I mean, I've heard a lot of stories and I would say, I think it'd be pretty wild to think that we're the only life on earth. So, I mean, I'm not saying I'd like to see an alien, but I love hearing the stories about them. Did you Mm -hmm. ever think about writing those kind of genres? I think anything with comedy, I would write. Maybe you just given me an idea for my next film. Maybe it's an alien comedy. Do you like <laughs> doing stand up? <laughs> I tried it. How did I that go for you? <laughs> it was great. It was great. I think I Why I got to giggle? the point where Why I had... are you giggling. It was well, it, it was great. It's just, no, it was uh, it's definitely a lifestyle. I've tried it for about a year. Got to a point where I had a solid five minutes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm telling you that's a lot of time up there. Or you can say a lot of jokes in that time. And then after that, I was like, I'm good. I don't need to, I don't need to keep going from here. Been there. I tried it. And I think that it was really challenging. And when you start off, you're doing open mic night. So you sign up at like 8 p.m. And then you wait to get assigned a, a time. And sometimes being the new newer kid on the block, you'll be given like midnight. So then you wait and then you do your, your set at midnight. But Oftentimes I would have 10 pages of like a doctor dialogue to have an audition for like 9 a.m. the next morning. And I was like, I can't, I got to pick one. I think this, these two, I think kind of conflict a little too much. Comedian's lifestyle in the beginning, that grind is not that easy, but you tried it, right? You tried that. I tried it. It was great. And I think you got it. I think with being like doing stand up, it's not really a side gig, I think, or for me, it was, it's not really a side. It's, it's fun to do. And I host. Still, um, once in a while, like I'll do like host an award show here and there. And that's always fun to write jokes for that. But I'm definitely not a stand-up comedian. I think it was a fun thing to try. But I think if you want to do it, you really got to do it full time, you know, almost like five nights a week just to get really comfortable for years. They say, I think it takes like seven years to even get to a point where you really own your material. I wore too many hats. I think I just wanted to pick just the three. 
just the three other hats. Three is good. Well, I heard yeah. that you're certified in teaching yoga and mm-hmm. you're certified in transcendental meditation. Now, what's transcendental yeah. meditation? What's that like? Do you go off to another universe or how does that work? No, I mean, it's pretty simple. You just sit in a chair for 20 minutes and close your eyes. And um, it's sort of like plugging in your iPhone, but for yourself. So you kind of just cool. give yourself sort of like a recharge. And uh, it's really good to help sort of like calm your mind and your body and I think it really helps with like deep creativity and sort of feeling more relaxed in your day afterwards. Now I have a question. I used to do that, right? I would sit in a particular position for like an hour and I'd meditate, but I would get to a point where in my mind I would appear in front of myself and whatever I would do in my mind, I can do when I open my eyes. Is that a certain level Mm -hmm. that I got to? Because I didn't know what it's called. I just sat down and did the breathing patterns and all that. What does that mean? What type of meditation was that? Just sitting and closing your eyes? I closed my eyes and breathe into my stomach, out through my mouth, and I would get into this Mm -hmm. timing where I would see myself. Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely think there's, well, there's like thousands of different types of meditation. And sometimes certain breathing, it sounds like you're doing like a breathing style technique or like a relaxation style technique of meditation, which is very different than TM. But I have done in yoga, some styles of visualization and relaxation techniques where you you sort of visualize yourself in different situations. They're more for like planning your your life or goals ahead of you or I know that athletes do it I used to train for diving like diving board and one of the meditations you would do is is you would sit and visualize yourself diving perfectly sort of the going through the the technique of the dive down to the landing and in the water and and everything and that visualization is I think is supposed to help you when you when you actually do the dive. Well, now you can call me Grasshopper. Yeah. <laughs> I have reached the pinnacle. Uh, <laughs> well, you know. You, yeah. The student becomes the teacher. Yes, okay. I have become that. <laughs> You've become the teacher. Yes. Lucy, you are a lot of fun. Yes. You're a very cool person. Thank you. Thank I'm you. really excited about your career. I think you're very grounded. There's a lot more to you, more than meets the eyes. You're a transformer to me. And Thank you. Uh, yeah, and it's good being a transformer because that means you could do anything, major success in all your projects. But Sabrina is a great way to enter everyone's hearts. And one day you'll get your Hallmark Christmas movie. I'm hoping I'm hoping the right people are listening right now because there's a lot of listen to the show that kind of push buttons around and you know I call it the Hollywood shindick type of thing but nerds out there let's give our nerd love to Miss Lucy Guest and Lucy is there anything you want to tell the fans before we start heading out I can't wait for you to see part three and please connect with me online so we can talk about it more as it's going live absolutely and you have to come back on because you're a fun guest you didn't put me to sleep and it's not boring (laughs) I didn't doze off I have dozed off before I'm going to be honest with you I didn't tell anybody this I have (laughs) fell asleep in my chair and the producers threw a banana at my head and they said wake up oh, wow yes at least it was a softer fruit <laughs> no it was actual <laughs> banana it went like a okay. and it hit me in the back of the head but anyway <laughs> this is a true story it's happened before oh, wow. but uh oh, wow. i know you can't wait for the guests to see you or the fans, I said the guests. Uh, your name just guest. like throws me Everyone's off. Everyone's so. a guest. <laughs> I know. It's, a, it's a cool I'm name. A guest guest. It's such a cool name. Thank Lucy, you. Yes. Be my guest. I will never forget it. People should not forget it. And fans out there, please follow Lucy on her social media pages. That's at Lucy Guest on Instagram. Do you also have a Twitter? I do. Same, same. Lucy Guest. There you go. No abbreviations or anything like that. But anyways, follow her on social media. Say hi. Do not be rude. Do not send naughty pictures. Lucy, don't open their (laughs) naughty pictures. There's some perks. Okay, I won't. I'll open those first. (laughs) Hey, you get the good with the bad. Yes. But anyways, we would love to have you back on. Thank you so much for coming Thank on the show. Thank you so today. much for having Thank me. Thank you for being fun. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. With us <laughs> for a little bit here today. Lucy, with that said, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Lucy, we have to blow a billion kisses to the fans out there. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready? Three, 
two, one, mwah, a billion mwah. kisses to the universe. Thank you, Lucy, for that. Fans, hold her kisses while you're watching the chilling adventures of Serena. And Lucy, with that said, peace. Peace. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comiccon-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time. It was amazing. You're fantastic. I'd love to see you guys again, and this is and this is really a pleasure.